This is Collaborate, Meet, and Work Remotely, another Grow with Google class. The first thing we're going to look at is this URL down here, grow.google slash remote work. These are some resources that they've put up since the beginning of the pandemic shutdown. And we're not going to click on all of them. I just wanted you to know that they're here. They've got a lot of information. Again, that's grow.google slash remote work. So this is something that you might want to go through on your own if you are doing work from home. But for today, we're going to go through the rest of this slideshow. These are some working remotely tips for you to keep in mind if you are doing this or considering doing this. So you're going to want to keep to your routine and that is um, connected to this last one. If you're not at work, don't work. You don't want your job to balloon out to take up all the hours of your day. You're going to want to keep some time to yourself. If you have a routine, it's just easier to separate work from the rest of your life. They recommend having a dedicated work spot. Um, you may not have an office at home, but if you pick a place like the kitchen table or a specific chair in your living room and that's where you work, that'll be another thing that makes it easy to keep your work from taking over everything else in your life. Definitely want to schedule lunch and breaks. It's a very good idea to get up at least every couple of hours and just walk around the room a little bit so that you won't get too stiff. You need to make sure you have all the tools that you need. Um, anything that you're used to using at work, you may not have all of the paper clips and staplers and highlighters and things like that. So you may need to equip your home office with those things that you use a lot. It's a good idea to create a daily to-do list and it's a really good idea to do that the day before. If you do that when you're ending your work day, then the next morning when you go to your spot and you start to work, you've already got your marching order set out for the day. It's a good idea to remember that if your coworkers are at home as well, they may have kids or pets in the house or something else going on that's creating some background noise. They may have some things going on that's making them turn things in late. So they may not be able to respond to you as quickly as you'd like. If you have a meeting with them, there may be kids going in and out of the room. So we all should just, I think, have a great deal of patience with each other. All of these are really good work from home tips. So that'll be something to bear in mind as you go forward. I think for a lot of us, even if we don't work from home all the time, we may work from home on a limited basis. So if you do these things, it'll make it all easier. This is the agenda for what we're gonna to learn today. We're gonna to look at Google Meet and Calendar, Google Drive. We're gonna learn how to share and comment on documents. We're going to talk about some different ways you can learn from anywhere and then have a little recap. And this is how you'll sign into a Google account. And if you don't have one, we have a class on YouTube called Getting Started with Google that will walk you through setting one up. All right, so the first part is communicate from anywhere. And one way you can do that is Google Meet. They used to have a product called Hangouts, which I think that they are merging with Meet. And you may recognize this little logo. It looks like a green quotation mark. Now it's got a video camera in it. It's a way for you to have in-person meetings or video meetings with clients, customers, and coworkers. So this is what it looks like on a phone. You can, for right now, you can have meetings with up to 250 participants. You can record the meetings and there's encryption for the meetings. And if you are interested in the security, this URL down here at the bottom is how you can find out more information about that. Um, these uh, extra features are available through September 30th, 2020. Uh, there is a G Suite which is their paid for version that has more features and there's a consumer version. If you have the free version of Google, like a Gmail address and you aren't paying for it, then in the future with me, you will not be able to have 250 participants. And another slide, we're gonna look at some more differences between the free version and the G Suite version. So 
So for the free version, usually the maximum duration of the meetings can be one hour. You can't record meetings with the free version usually. And then this is the business or the G Suite version. For right now, again, you can get all these features through the end of September. And these are just some ideas of things you can do with Google Meet. And if you are on Zoom, it is a good deal like Zoom. Or if you've done Microsoft Teams meeting, it'll look a good deal like that. So there's two different ways you can join a conference. You can go straight to the Google Meet online, or you can do this through Calendar. This is how you do it online. You just go to meet.google.com. If you don't have a Google account, someone can let you in, but you can't do it on a mobile device unless you have a Google account. So if you don't have that account, you will have to go to a desktop or a laptop and go to meet.google.com to join. Then the other way is to do this through a calendar. Um, through Google Calendar. So if you've ever set meetings on Microsoft Outlook, this is quite a bit the same. You go to the day that you want, you double click on it, um, you set up the name of the meeting, the hours that's going to meet. If you want to add the video conferencing, there's the Meet logo right there or I'm moving my mouse. And then we've got it all set up the way you want it, you save it. There's a closer look at the ad video conferencing. And you've got more options at the bottom, so you can click on that and it will give you some more. This is what it will look like if you put anyone else's email on it when you're setting it up. They'll get an email inviting them to the meeting and then they can say yes, no, or maybe. So that way you can get an idea of how many people are coming and if they mark it yes or maybe they'll have something in their calendar or they can click join with Google Meet on the day of the meeting and get right in. And that is what that will look like for them. So here's another view. We saw this before. This is the meeting on a smartphone and this is it on a desktop. On both of them, they have these little symbols in the circles. That is how you can mute or unmute yourself and you can turn your video on and off. It's a good idea to leave your video on if you can so people can see who they're talking to, but if your internet is a little spotty, it may be better to turn it off. So that is kind of up to you. And now we're gonna look at some Google Meet features. This is a look at how it'll be if you sign on on the uh, desktop. The chat is something that goes on while the meeting is on. If you want to ask a question and you don't want to say it into your microphone, um, you can type it into chat. You can also put links in there that you want people to know about, anything like that. You can see in the corner their names and there's a little symbol that tells you if their microphone is on or not. You can share your screen, which is what I'm doing right now in Zoom. And you can have some choices about how you do that. You can show your entire screen, which will show your desktop and everything that's going on in the background. Or you can do a specific window. So what I'm doing right now is I'm sharing my entire Chrome window, which means I can go easily in between all these different tabs. And that is actually why I have my slides set up like this so that I can um, do it more easily. If I go into present, then it makes this slide the whole window. Uh, another thing you can do is a specific Chrome tab. So if you do that, and if I had it on just this tab and then I switched over to another one, it would still be showing you this, even if I was over here doing who knows what. So you just need to think ahead of time about how you want to share it. And there's your present now at the bottom. So if you share your screen, you can pull up something like a document that the team is working on. 
Um, you can just show them a picture, um, you can play videos. Uh, everyone will be able to see exactly what you're doing on the screen. And you can record meetings. So if you had something like a staff meeting, um, not everyone can attend, you could record it and then they could just watch it later. Here are some best practices. Um, again, keeping your camera on is a good idea. If your internet isn't working very well, you may have to turn it off to make it smaller bandwidth. But um, if everything is working, it's a good idea. It's a good idea to choose a neutral background. If you're doing this from home, you may not be able to, but if you can, just be aware of what's going on behind you. Also think about the lighting. If you are sitting in front of a window, for example, it may put you in silhouette so that no one can see you and you're just a black shape against the window. So think about how that looks and you can always turn it on before the meeting and see how you look on the screen. Um, you might want to test out your microphone before the meeting. If you have headphones or earbuds that have a microphone, that might help. And you mute your microphone when you aren't speaking, then all of your background noise, of setting your coffee mug down the table, your dog barking and things like that, that won't be coming across the speakers for everybody else. And they recommend solid color clothing for on camera instead of stripes and patterns. Um, if you're in a meeting where you're going to be a very small square on the screen like this, and you can see these two people have on plain clothes. It could possibly be a little bit distracting if you have on a pattern and you're moving around like that. So that's just something to think about if you can do that. So that is everything about Google Meet and we're going to look at some other ways to collaborate. These are some applications that you have access to with Google. And we have looked at these in other classes that we've had going on. Um, sheets and docs are something that we've worked with, I think, in digital, sorry, everyday, digital tools for everyday tasks. Uh, slides is what I'm doing right now, and we're going to have a class on that in the future. Photos will look familiar to you if you have an Android phone or tablet, because that is where it saves your, saves your pictures. You are probably familiar with Chrome, the browser and Gmail is the Google email. And this is how you will get to those. I'm actually gonna go over to the next browser window and show you that. Another thing to be aware of is they've got this J up here in the corner that is showing that somebody is logged in. So here's this nine dot grid. And that's where they put all of these apps and you have access to all of this if you have a Google account. Now, if you don't have a Google account, your place of work may have some other suite of tools like Microsoft 365 or something else. It probably has pretty similar features to this. So uh, if that's what you have and you don't want to sign up for the Google account because your coworkers are on something else, this will give you an idea of some things that you can look at and what you, whatever it is you have to work with. And if you scroll on down, there's even more down here. Um, Keep is a nice little notes app. There's the Hangouts, which is, I don't know if they're going to keep the Hangouts as just a chat, but in that you just type in somebody and you can't see them or talk to them, it's just the text. Um, there's Meet, so um, I, I heard somewhere that they were going to merge those, maybe they're going to keep them separate. Books, finance, blockers, so there's just a ton that you have access to and there's even more down there. So if you do have a Google account, it's worth looking at that and clicking around to see what you have. We're going to look at Google Drive, which is, it's this uh, sort of a triangle. This is what mine looks like. You can set up folders to keep things organized. It'll put the last three things that you worked on up here and and there's all these different kinds of things that you can use. And you can access this from your mobile device. And again, if you have an Android device, Drive will already be installed. One of the good things about Drive is you can, if you're working from home and you're working from the office sometimes, if you're working on something at home, you can save it to Drive. 
pulled up in your office, make changes to it, it's going to be still saved in your drive when you pull it up at home. Whenever you're working on one of these internet tools like Docs or Slides, whatever you do, automatically saves, so you don't have to worry about saving it to Drive because it's going to go ahead and do that for you. And you can save all kinds of files. There's a PDF down there. It, you don't have to just save your Google things. You can upload things like text files or Microsoft Word as well. And you can share, which I'm going to show you because they've changed it a little bit. Um, if you go to this, this is what it looks like now. That's where you can change how people can share it. Um, these are where you can get a link. So it just looks a little bit different, but you can share it with coworkers and decide what they can do, if they can make changes or only look at it. So instead of uh, emailing around to different versions of a document, you can all share one document so that you're all working on the same version of um, any kind of a, something like an agenda or a budget. And you can create documents in Google Drive and they're showing how to do this on this little slide. There's a new button with a little plus on it. And that's how you can get into docs, slides, or sheets. And this is showing you the template gallery. If you've ever used docs or sheets or, or slides, it's a good idea to go into the templates and look at it. Even if you don't think that you like templates, it will give you some ideas of what you can do with these, with these tools. Whenever you start your document or your slideshow or whatever it is that you're working on, if you click up there, it'll say Untitled Document. If you click on it, it will let you rename your document. Um, if you don't do that, it will eventually rename it with the first line of whatever it is that you type at the top. And you can add comments, which will go over on the side, and they won't show up in the text. So you can put in a comment and not worry about formatting, things like that. You can just put it over here let your coworkers think about it. And then they can decide if they want to make changes or just delete it. Um, if you do have these and you want to print it, you can print it without comments or with comments and a sidebar. And then we looked at the share button, so it's yellow and slides will be blue, docs, I believe green and sheets. And then this is just the same thing in Sheets. You can assign tasks and click Assign down there. And here's a way to collaborate in slides. You can ask questions or leave notes with comments. And you can, uh, you can download other file formats. If you work on something in Docs, and you have Microsoft Word at the office. When you get to the office, you can download it as Word. You can download things as PDFs. Plain text is .txt. That will take all the formatting out of it. So if you have things in bold or italic or different colors, it'll take all of that out, but you can put it into a notepad or WordPad. So these are just different options that you have. You can also upload from other formats. So if you're working on something at a place where you have Microsoft Word, but you don't have it in another place, you can upload it as Microsoft Word and then download it as something else later. And with some things, you can use them offline. You do have to be online when you do this, but you can make something available offline so that you can work on it in a place where you don't have Wi-Fi. And then these are just some other apps. We saw um, that they have quite a lot later. So they've got forums, sites. There's the Google Play Store. All right, so now we're going to go into Learn From Anywhere. And while we're on the slide, we have another class about free online lessons with Learning Express and Linda. So that is on YouTube if you're interested in this for another platform. They have G Suite training. In G Suite, again, is the paid for version of all of their apps. And you can take all of this training online for free. If you do want to get certified, there's a test and it costs about $79. And 
And if you want information, they've got the URL down here in blue. But if you don't care about the certification, you can take the classes for free. Applied to digital skills is something that we're going to have a class on and put it on YouTube later. Um, it is a lot of video based lessons that you can take for free. So we're going to have a class on how to get around in that. But if you want to try it out, they've got a URL down here. All you need to sign in is just to have a Google account. Primer is an app. It's really short business and marketing lessons and it's a free app. It does not have a website. You do have to get the app to download for it. Um, well, it has a website, your yourprimer.com. So they may be changing that, but at least in the past, you had to download it. And you can get it on Google Play or on the App Store for iPads. Skillshop used to be called Academy for Ads. It's a way to take free online lessons on some of their business tools. Um, this one down here is Google My Business. Um, they've got the Marketing Platform Analytics Academy. So if you're interested in running a business or possibly someday being an entrepreneur, these are some classes you can take to uh, work on that. And then these are the next steps. Uh, you might want to try out Meet for Google, try out Drive, and if you go to grow.google, they'll have some additional training. Um, those things that we showed, uh, the skill shop, the applied digital skills, the G Suite training. And then here are some more resources. I'm just going to leave it here for a second in case anybody wants to write anything down or take a screenshot. The top one is the one that we looked at at the beginning of class. Okay, so the last thing is how to contact me if you need any help. My name is Emily and this is my work address at the top and I check it constantly. The second one is my Gmail address. So if you wanted to do something like practice sharing a document, you could share it to me and just put on the message, let me know if you get this and I will message back that I got it, how it looks. And my phone extension is 140. If you ever leave me a message, I'll get back to you as fast as I can. Now that is everything that I have on collaborating, meeting, and working remotely. Thank you for watching.